And then Leo, I guess this was an attempt to make her feel better, said, before today, you were number two on my list. But now, you and Hannah are equally at number one. <laughs> what it? <laughs> I've been for you. Guys, Love is Blind is back, so you know I was gonna be back with the reviews. Um, we are a day late, so obviously it dropped yesterday. Normally I would have had the video out to you yesterday, but I had a friend round from holiday, so the video is coming to you on this lovely Thursday evening or morning, wherever you're watching from. But in general, I will try and get my reviews out to you on the evening that the episodes drop. But yes, guys, I am excited. As you know, I had a time reviewing Love is Blind UK. Literally feels like just yesterday. And now we're in DC. So I'm not trying to waste any time. I want to get this video out as soon as possible so I can read your thoughts because as always, you guys come with the best takes. So I'm excited to, the community's back. We're back, guys, we're back. My gold cup is here. Different setup. The bar is back there. We're here, I'm chilling cozy pajamas i'm in my own little pod let's go and yeah as always gonna be looking at my phone for the notes so yeah we meet all the men and all the women do you know what's so funny to me on those first few dates like everybody's all dressed up the women are in their heels cute little dresses outfits and we know as time goes on they're now in they, they end up in track suits pjs even i i always find that quite hilarious one of my first notes, Ashley A, stunning, gorgeous. I was saying to my friend, from the side, she looks a little bit like Lauren Speed from season one. Does anybody else see it? Because my friend didn't see it, but I saw it. I want to know, does anybody else see it? But yeah, so we meet Ashley. She seems to be vibing with Tyler from like quite early on. We meet Nick D, who is a smooth talker. He seems to have a vibe with many of the girls. He's someone who flirts very easily clearly like he can flirt with a brick wall and yeah obviously then we find out he works in real estate and i'm like i says to my friend that makes all the sense in the world because to be in real estate you've got to have like the gift of the gab you're trying to sell the houses like obviously watch sell and sunset also on netflix you need to know how to talk things up and each client is going to be different so you need to understand how to work each person and what things might work well for them you know he's had many a practice like i was not surprised by his job role we see leo and hannah and they seem to be really vibing and getting on at this point i wrote like he was straight up like i'm just gonna tell you i like you i'm not even trying to play games and in this moment i'm like do you know what i like that he's not playing any games just saying how he feels at the time we're gonna get into Leo but yeah then we see he's uh getting on with Britney as well I'm like is this gonna be our first love triangle now I'm gonna say something I haven't been online so I don't know if people <laughs> agree with me but I rated the fact Britney was just like listen I want a man with money I want to be taken care of I don't want to work too much I don't want to cook I, like at the end of the day she knows what it is that she wants and she's honest about it she's not trying to be sneaky and present like it's something else and then come and be someone else like comment below and let me know your thoughts on her state if she wants someone with money like did you find that a bit icky or were you like fair play then we meet taylor and she has the most beautiful smile beautiful face but her smile is so beautiful and i love her voice as well and her fashion sense I don't know if people are talking about this online. She's given fits after fits. Like every outfit she wore, I was like, I would have that, I would have that. I may even try and recreate some of them. Like her fashion sense. I want to look up, if anyone knows what she does, I'm going to look it up and see. Is it anything to do with fashion or is she just into it? She seemed to be getting on well with Gara and it was really cool. They were both like geeking out over some science stuff or something like that. It was cute. I liked it. I liked them together. Then we have... Alex and Tim uh, speaking. Now, I know everything that comes later, but I'm just speaking. I'm going to be honest with my thoughts in episode one. So she's obviously speaking about, you know, her parents both having MS and her dad and her stepmom, like looking after her dad. And then like her mom, that was so sad, like her mom being married. And when her, the, her MS got bad, her partner just left her which is so sad, like, I, 
I've known of someone dealing with MS, it's like, it's, oh, it's like painful to see, it's really hurtful to see and to deal with it and like to have that within your family and going through it, like I can't even imagine how hard it is. So she was talking about this to Tim. Now, I don't know if it's the way they edit this show. I, I, I have this take a few times in certain moments and I want to believe it's just down to the editing because after she shared that story, Tim just went on to talk about himself and like his family and he's been for a lot, he's lost two sisters and like growing up he felt like he came from a great family and all of this and it was like, it didn't feel like he addressed what it was that he shared, she shared, he just went on to share his own experiences. Now, he may have actually responded and they just edited that part out, I would like to think, but that was a bit jarring for me to see, but I mean, equally, his story, like, heartbreaking is so, like, I can't even begin to imagine losing a sibling, and I'm not going to right now because I will actually start crying on camera. Speaking of, I have an announcement for you guys soon. Uh, keep watching this video for that. So we're seeing Leo and Brittany talking. Um, he's obviously letting her know he comes from money. He lets everybody know he comes from money, by the way. Uh, that's what he leads with, we'll get into it. Like I said, Leo, we're gonna get into Leo. What a character. But yeah, you can tell Brittany is gassed that he has money. She said, yes, this is what I came here for. <laughs> so yeah, he's letting her know, you know, he's nervous that people only like him for his money and not him. But it's like, that's what you keep leading with. You're letting everyone know you took over your parents' business and like, or your grandparents' business and you come from money. You grew up very wealthy. Like, that's what he talks about the most, Leo. So if that's what you're leading with, of course you're going to attract the wrong people. Comment below your thoughts. But yeah, like I said, he keeps saying, you know, he doesn't want his job to define him, but that's all you keep talking about. Like even, I can't remember if it was this episode when he's speaking with Hannah, like, you know, I'm an art dealer. I know we haven't really spoken about that. And I feel like people care so much about my job normally. And I was like, yeah, no, it's fine. We don't have to talk about it. But he kept talking about it. <laughs> right, guys, let's talk about the plot twist I didn't see coming. I literally wrote in my notes. Let me read it. Oh, Taylor and Garrett seem sweet. I see them getting married. Right after I wrote that, we have the whole... Garrett switch up where she's like I'm not gonna say my mom's name because it will give away where I'm from so she I, I when I saw her I was like okay she's half Asian half white it would seem and yeah so her dad she spoke about her dad said his name and her mom she didn't say her mom's name and we find out that she's from Hong Kong and Garrett was like oh you seem cal the minute he found out she wasn't fully white he was like, oh, you're being calculated. Why are you speaking like this? I feel like I can't trust you. And I was like, is that really your thoughts? Or is it because you found out she wasn't white? Because we later find out he's only ever dated a white woman. Nothing wrong with that. Like, if your type is your type, that is, it is what it is. But obviously you come into this experiment knowing you could end up with someone that isn't your usual type because you can't see them. His reaction floored me. And if I'm honest, we're gonna get into like the rest of the episodes. I don't think I was able to recover from it. And like, there was a, he was tainted to me after that. Like they were one of my favorite couples. They seemed like the most compatible and sweet, but I was side eyeing him the rest of the time. We'll get onto it, but yeah. Hannah is feeling somewhat of like red flags towards Nick D and all the girls are saying, you know, you need to end it. Cause they've all been on dates and they're like, he's a smooth talker. He's not serious. Like girl no and also like so she's 26 so she's the youngest i know there was a period where people were getting married quite young the age that people are getting married is a lot older now 26 are you ready for marriage sometimes yes in hannah's case i don't know um <laughs> and it was so crazy like even people's reaction to her saying you know she's feeling nick d the girls are laughing like are you all right are you saying nick nick <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I don't think she's gonna go through with it and end things, but she goes in the pod and ends up ending things with him. I was shocked. He was pleading, fighting for his life, but she still ended things. Cool. Now on to, so that was episode one. We're now moving into episode two. Guys, we're getting through six episodes this video. Let's see if I can do it. So yeah, episode two, 
Hannah is now regretting ending things with Nick. <laughs> this is the thing, like, the back and forth and all of it. Like, it must be a lot on the mind being in that experiment. But I do think her age comes into play with the way in which she's making decisions. And don't get me wrong, I have been Hannah. I've gone back on many of decisions I've made. I've ended things, gone back. Anyway, it's not about that, okay? It's about love is blind. <laughs> but yeah, so Hannah is having doubts because she hears Britney say that she has a connection with Leo. Because I guess after Hannah ended things with Nick, she was going to focus on her connection with Leo. So now she knows that Britney and Leo have a thing going on too. I think she's a bit like, oh God, was I too like quick to call things off with Nick? And like, she doesn't like, I guess the feeling of being unsafe because she doesn't know if Leo's gonna pick her. So now she's second guessing her thoughts. And she was saying Nick went home and I'm thinking, was that just your own assumption that he went home? Because you thought if you end things with him, he's gonna leave and you didn't think he, like, I was a bit like, hmm. But yeah, so then we see Leo and Brittany on their date. And, you know, I feel like, did I admit, like, the conversation felt a bit weird because Leo is basically telling Brittany, you know, I do really like you. I see something here. And Brittany's just like, oh my God, I wish I went home. I feel like I wanted to go home today. It was obviously her finding out that Leo had something with um, Hannah as well, which she hadn't known at the time maybe or she's getting in her head and she starts crying and then leo i guess this was an attempt to make her feel better said before today you were number two on my list but now you and hannah are equally at number one <laughs> what <Well>, it <laughs> so then we see marissa and i hope i pronounced his name right bowden um, they seem to be um, hitting off. We find out he's from Ukraine. He was in the military and when everything was going on, he decided to go back and fight for his country. And so they're bonding over that because Marissa was also in the military. But Marissa is also hitting it off with Ramses. Ramses? Guys, I'm going to get next week. I'm going to have the pronunciations down. Apologies. So she's liking the both of them. And she lets them know, you know, I do have a connection with someone else. I love her energy. And like She's got like a very like fun and bubbly personality. And you it comes across in the pods. So then back to Garrett and Taylor. He sends her sunflowers because he knows that's her favorite flower. And ends up asking her to be his girlfriend. Like, So they've gotten past the whole, his reaction to where she's from. Like, her not wanting to say, because she doesn't want to ruin the experiment. Like, She doesn't want to say anything about what it is that she looks like. Which is stunning. I know I said it before, but we need to go back to that. So yeah, he sends her some flowers. Asks her to be his girlfriend. She of course says yes. They have another date in the evening. And she's got her grandparents' love letters. And I feel like I speak about this later on in my notes as well. But the whole, like, bringing your grandparents' letters, I feel like someone else did that before. They wrote a letter prior to. Maybe if I was in the experiment, I'd do the same thing. But pre-calculated moves, I don't know. I, I, I just do question them a bit because it's like, you don't even know who's going to be there. How do you know you are? Oh, yes. It's, um... I think it's Tim. He gives Alex one of his sister's bracelets. We'll get into that. But I'm just like, to bring it, like, with hopes of giving it away, I'm just like, really? So yeah, anyways, she has her grandparents' love letters and they read them and then she reads him a love letter she wrote for him. Garrett proposes to Taylor. She, of course, says yes and they get engaged. Like I said, I'm still side-eyeing him after his reaction, but we'll see. So we see Monica and Steven, they seem to be catching a vibe. I'm like, okay, this seems cool. We find out Steven is, what is it, like one-tenth West African? <laughs> like Nigerian, Ghanaian, Congolese. Big up you, Steven, and your ancestry.com. That took me out, and he was so gassed and excited to speak about this. He also voted for Trump, though, and him... Now, I don't, I'm not sure if this is an offensive word or not, but when she said she was mixed and he obviously referred to her with the M word, oh, you're a, and I was like, I don't know, I felt uncomfortable hearing that. Comment below 
especially like in America and just in general, that term, is it offensive? Is it wrong? Because I was like, hmm, can you say that? Like, I don't know why I've, let, educate me guys, comment below on that because that didn't sit right with me. Am I just hypersensitive or was that a bit wild from him? Am I alone in that? And then yeah, obviously we know he voted for Trump as well, which made me side eye him a bit. So yeah, then we have Tyler and Ashley, they were on a date and they listen to some of their favorite songs. They listen to a country song and it's such like a beautiful moment. I really like these two. And also I like that day I did. Like, I feel like being in those pods and getting to share one of my favorite songs. Like even when you, I've, there's been times I'm like dating a guy, we're driving in this car and I'll put on a song like, oh, this is one of my favorite songs. Or I see this song on my wedding or this is like a first dance song I like. Or this song reminds me of this moment. Like just exchanging music with someone. There's something quite like, I don't know. I really like it. Comment below if you guys agree. Or am I just, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, Tyler let, tells Ashley he loves her. Correct me if I'm wrong, but she doesn't say it back. But yeah, that's episode two. On to episode three. Guys, we are rolling through this. Let's go. So Taylor and Garrett have their reveal. And I was a bit nervous because I was like, his reaction just really threw me off. But I think we can all agree from them like meeting, Garrett loves him some Taylor. He was attracted to heaven. He couldn't stop kissing her. He couldn't keep his hands off her. Like he was like, cause she's stunning. Taylor is stunning. And he was like, wow, I struck out. So you can see they both really liked each other. It was a sweet moment. So Ramses, Ramses and Bowden, they, they find out they both like Marissa, like she's both of their number ones. Um, and then I think we see Ramesses and Marissa, they're on their date. And they have these cards and they look like the skin deep cards. Okay, this is a good time to pause. Remember when I said I have a little surprise for you guys or something is coming up? So I have a new series coming to my YouTube because I love doing these reviews. But when I'm done, I'm like, oh no, guys, I'm going to miss you. I want more. I want to speak to you guys more. So it's a bit similar to if you've ever watched the skin deep like two people sat in a room answering some deep questions with each other and it's just a fun way i feel like for you guys to get to know me more so i've already filmed the first episode which will be dropping this sunday with my sister um it got a bit emotional uh <laughs> we're very emotional when we get together to be fair so it's gonna be people that i truly love and it's gonna it's really special to get to introduce them to you but also in a way introduce me to you because i always feel like when you see the people that someone truly cares about you really get to know them so you're going to get insight into our relationship and it's just like beautiful vibes i feel like this series is going to be called sunday fills so it will be dropping on sunday so look out for that guys so in the season of love is blind we're gonna have review on a wednesday Sunday fills on a Sunday and I may even have something else for you guys another series that I'm planning on putting together I'm not gonna say too much yet when I have the exact date of when I will be dropping the first episode then I'll let you know but I'm coming back to YouTube I don't want to just do love is blind and leave you guys because I love this community that we have together and I feel like you guys would enjoy that anyway back to the review <laughs> So yeah, Ramses and Marissa, they seem to be hitting it off even more than her and Bowden. And even their views on like raising kids and everything. She's like, she would be happy to work and have a stay at home dad. And he seems okay, but like they seem aligned and it feels more romantic. So Tyler and Ashley go on another day. It's his birthday. She's got him balloons and a cake. Little throwback to uh, Demi and Ollie, Love is Blind UK. If you guys were there for my UK reviews, you remember. So yeah, she's written him a letter. She's reading it to him. It's so cute. She gets emotional. She's crying. And now she finally tells him that she loves him. It's, it's a people I like these two. And I feel like, I hope they don't break my heart. But every season, the couple that I love, right in the heart 
but we'll see. Tyler ends up proposing, of course she says yes, it's a beautiful moment when they go back to their separate pods and everything. So Brittany is now getting in her head about the thought of Leo not picking her, um, she goes on a date with him, he's saying, you know, he's struggling to make a decision, it's so hard. I feel like he's loving this attention, so he's milking it. He's milk, Leo, you're milking it. <laughs> Comment below your thoughts though. So he's like, okay, I need to speak to Hannah one last time and then I'll be able to make a decision. Um, Cause I guess they had another date in the evening with each other. So he's like, after this evening, I'll be able to come to you with a decision. And she's like, do you know what? I want you to even sleep on it. So tell me tomorrow. And that was a good move. Like um, I viewed it as a good like power play move. Cause it, in his head now he's realizing maybe that she's pulling away a bit. And one thing, I feel like he's just enjoying being liked. So he's like, he wants to bring her back in again. It felt like. We see Leo on his date with Hannah and she's telling him, you know, if he proposed, she'd say yes, but she still likes Nick D. Oh God, I didn't even write notes on that. So when obviously she was getting in her head second guessing, she had another date with Nick, asked him to stay. And he did, and so they're back to dating again, but she still likes Leo, and it's just like, but I'm like, maybe if I, I'm looking at her a bit sideways, but then I'm also like, if you're in this position, maybe it's easy, it could be easy to find yourself in this where you've built a strong connection with someone, but you do have a strong connection with someone else. Like, falling in love with two people at once, it seems like it's something that happens frequently on this show. And part of me also thought like, does Hannah like Leo? Is a part of her liking him because Britney likes him too? Cause let's be honest, when somebody is wanted, it does make them more attractive to you. To an extent like that whole competition element of it all. So she shares with Leo that, uh, Hannah shares with Leo that she used to struggle with her weight. And Leo's reaction was okay, but I feel like Nick had a much better reaction to what she said, like just made it as if like, okay, yeah, it's fine, it's nothing. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I'm not threatened by that. I'm not whatever by that. Like, it is what it is, it's life, you know? And he was just more reassuring. So then we have Steven and Monica. They share with each other that they're, you know, they're in love with each other and they, you know, they both get emotional. And oh, again, guys, I need your thoughts. I want to know, like, I do want to like them, but I do side-eye Steven a bit. Like, with the comment he made to her calling her the M-word, I still don't know if it's offensive. Like, let me know. Calling her the M-word, he's voted for Trump before. I just, I don't know. My spirit wants to take to him, but it isn't. But I really want to know your thoughts on Steven. Comment below. We have Tyler and Ashley meeting for the first time. That, guys, I need them to work. Because you could, they do this to me every year. I'm sold. They pull me in. You, It feels like they really like each other. And I'm just like, oh, I can feel the feelings through the screen. Like, I can only imagine how, like, euphoric and amazing that must feel. You're looking at each other like, we've built this amazing bond and I love you regardless. But now seeing each other, they're both clearly attracted to each other as well. <sighs> love is blind, don't break my heart. Again. <laughs> so then Leo and Brittany have their evening date. And he's asking her, you know, what sort of ring would you want if I'm going to propose? And it was a cute moment until he says, I'm going to ask Hannah the same thing. <laughs> Brittany is like frustrated. She's like, at the end of the day, even though she told him she didn't need to hear a, a choice until the next day. Now it's like, she's just like, no, my husband shouldn't be torn. And I get it. I can imagine feeling that way like that. I've had thoughts like that in conversations where if we're trying too much, it's not meant to be. I'm happy to bow out. Cause I've, one thing about me, I'm not gonna beg you to see the value in me that I want you to see. If you don't see it, you don't see it, it is what it is. I'm out. There's gonna be someone that will see it. So I feel like that's where she's at. So Leo goes on a date with Hannah and she lets him know she's feeling Nick more. Cause she's obviously had a date with Nick prior to this and they're, it, it's feeling like they're becoming more locked in, like 
that's where she's gonna go to. So she's letting him know she's more leaning towards Nick now. And he's like, is it because you felt like I wasn't giving you enough? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, well, I felt the same way about you. He's like, you were dating someone else too. That's why I was holding back. And he's saying, you know, is it set in stone that you are gonna be with each other? And I'm just thinking, Leo, are you okay? Like, you want her to not be with this guy, put all her eggs into your basket when you're only willing to make her an option. This guy is telling her, it's only you. It's only you. And you're telling her, you and someone else are both my number one. I still need to decide. But again, I asked myself if I was in his position and I like these two people equally, would I react the same? Well, not like that, but would I have the same thoughts like, I want you, even though I know this other person is giving you their everything and they're essentially someone else that I like. I Yeah, it's an, inter it's an interesting one. So yeah, he's fighting hard for her and he's basically like, what would you say if I asked you to marry me? So yeah, episode four, it's a continuation. It like tails off into episode four. And I'm just like, Leo is giving manipulative vibes though. Like all the arguments he's trying to fight with to like win her round. And I'm like, this guy is not used to be told, he's not used to being told no. Like, and you can see it, like how he's like getting so frustrated, even to the point he's like, he he shouts at her. Like, he's like, I have another connection and I'm still effing here. Da -da -da. And he's probably shouting at her. And I'm like, that would, that would be enough for me to be like, yeah, no, absolutely not. And yeah, I, he gives the vibes of he could be emotionally abusive as a partner because all these arguments and how he's trying to manipulate, I'm just like, hmm. But I did write, um, like what I was saying before, let me read it. I do wonder in this experience, should we not judge, like in this experience, should we not judge? Could we feel the same as Leo having two connections and being annoyed that they have another connection? Because I guess you're just focused on you I don't know. I don't know. I rubbed me the wrong way. Very uncomfortable to watch. But yeah. Okay, yeah. Here's what I was talking about before. Tim gives Alex his sister's bracelet. And yeah, like I said, like, her, like when he gives her the bracelet, like I said, I'm like, people bringing these things, like, is this a calculated thought? Is it normal? Or even do producers encourage, like, maybe bring something special in case you meet someone that you'd want to give to them? Just speaking on myself, like, if I lost somebody close to me, I don't know if I'd give away their stuff to someone I don't really know. I haven't known that long. I mean, I guess in the moment he feels like I see myself spending my whole life with this person. But yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, we see Stephen propose to Monica. She says yes, of course, beautiful. So Hannah and Leo are on a date. I feel like she was low-key kind of saying to him that there is a certain element to their connection that is better than what it is with Nick or in some aspects. But then Leo basically says, yeah, we're not suited. <laughs> and yeah, she should be with Nick. He asks her to speak to Brittany and basically let her know like, can you speak to Brittany and let her know that it is her that I wanted and I don't want her to think that she was, like, second choice or anything like that. And this was a mutual decision. Um, and, yeah, it was it was calculated. Am I surprised? No. But, yeah, I was just like, yeah, this man is a calculated guy. Yeah, Alex and Tim get engaged again. Beautiful moment. Monica and Stephen meet. It feels like, you know, the vibes are all good. He does really like her, it's all good. Like I said, still side-eyeing him. We have Nick proposing to Hannah. Then we see Alex and Tim meeting. They seem to like each other, but there was an awkward air to it that I felt. But I'm just like, is it because, I feel like they're showing a lot more of the first like meetups of these people together. So maybe it feels more awkward. I don't know or how it's edited, but there was a little bit of an awkward element to them. Um, but he's very much attracted to her. She was nervous, like, she was like, I'm more curvier, is he gonna mind? But he was like, he said, I knew it, I knew you were gonna be attractive, so that was cute. Leo and Brittany are on their day, she's telling him she feels like a second option. She doesn't know if she can get back to where they were before, and that's where episode four ends. Episode five, so, 
Leo says to Brittany, you know, I'm going to keep telling you that I love you. I know you like hearing that. I'm thinking, is this guy for real? And then, you know, he reads her a poem, ends up proposing, even though like she's just expressed how unhappy she is, but she ends up saying yes. Um, okay. So then we have Hannah and Nick meeting. Now guys, are a lot of these women tall? Or are a lot of the men short? Because there is a lot of couples that are like that are like the same height or the girl is even almost taller than the guy. Initially Hannah was nervous. Am I gonna be attract is it am I gonna be attractive to him? Like is he gonna like how I look? Because she now Hannah made a point of obviously saying in high school she was a cheerleader. Um, you know, she's talking about how, you know, guys only like her for her looks and you know they think she's hot, but they don't care about, you know, what's on the surface, uh, beneath the surface, sorry, and all of this. So I feel like she painted a picture of what she could look like that may be somewhat different to what she actually looks like. And it would seem that Nick did the same and she was expecting like a f properly built athletic guy because, you know, he played American football. So she thought he was going to be tall and buff and all of this. And she sees him and she was a bit like, eh. <laughs> So then we have Ramses and Marissa. They're expressing their love for each other, which is really sweet. He ends up proposing. She says yes. <laughs> then we have Leo and Brittany meeting. He is so down for her because, of course, she's, like, very attractive, especially to, like, what the general standards are. And he can't believe his luck. He is all over her. He can't let her go. It was a bit uncomfortable to watch, like, he was, like, petting her and holding her face. And it make, it's always uncomfortable when you can see the other person isn't feeling it as much as the other. So there were points where she's, like, pulling away, like, visibly. Um, and I was like, I don't know. She even says, like, she doesn't know how to feel. It was just so awkward. And he just, his face was all in her space. And if you're not feeling someone and they're doing that, oh, it's the worst feeling ever. Um, been there. <laughs> and so he's listing all the reasons why he loves her because he's like, oh my God, I love you. And she's like, why? So he's listing it all. And then he asks her, like, what do you love about me? Or like, you know, reciprocate. And she's like, you know, like, even though I was one of your options, you like followed through with the process or something like that. And it's just like, and later on, she obviously says, you know, she's not there with love. And she feels like he's lying when he says he loves her. I think because it was just so evident how much he was drawn to her physical and she could see that. She was like, hmm. And I know she wanted the money, but I guess it wasn't by any means necessary because we see they're not one of the six couples that are chosen to go to Mexico, but they do go to Miami. And then a few weeks later, they break up. <laughs> Fun fact, same thing happened to me. I definitely went away on a vacation to Miami. I'm not going to give dates at some point. And when we got back a few weeks later, we broke up. Craziest thing was a great holiday. Story for another day. But what I will say about them breaking up, I'm gutted. I wanted to see what his house looked like. I'm going to try and find him on Instagram and look that up. Because he's going on about how much money he comes from. I want to see, is it truly as like, wow, as he's making it out to be. So then we have Marissa and Ramesses meeting up and you can see that they both really like each other and they're excited and happy to meet and it was cute. They had a nice height difference actually, I will say. So yeah, then we have the six couples who then go on to Mexico. This is the great part, I'm always so excited about this. So we see throughout this trip, Alex gets annoyed with Tim a lot. And I'm like, is this that, you know that playfulness you can have with a partner? Like, oh my God, you're so annoying, stop it, don't do that. And it's just like a playful fir flirting type of way. Or does she hate him? Like, I <laughs> comment below your thoughts on how she would get annoyed. Like, was it fun? Because some people can joke around, but they have like deadpan straight face. Was it that or was it more... Freddie, you know, Love is a Blind UK, Freddie, and I forgot her name already. And how she would like, he's trying to have fun and she's just like always shutting him down, shutting him down. Nick and Hannah. Now when they're like talking and expressing how much they like each other and all of this, it just feels like they're reading scripts. Like their words are great, but I'm not buying what they're selling. Like it just felt like 
they're saying the right things. Did anyone else get that feeling from like their first night when there was just like a awkward air around things? So then we have, I guess we're going to call it Duck Gate. <laughs> so Nick and Hannah, they're chilling by the pool. There's these little like ducks and Nick is like, oh, I'm going to go and ride them or whatever. And Hannah's like, don't do that. I'm going to get the ick. Um, and he's like, no, come on. Da, da, da. So he, he then goes on to do it. And there's a woman chilling by the pool as well. She sees him and she's like, oh, do you want to race? She gets on one of them. Hannah seems uncomfortable by the fact he's interacting with other women. Even though this woman's a lot older, I don't think Nick was interested in her like that. He's just, what is it that girls say? He's a friendly guy. There's another term that some people use, but they're like, I never want to date a friendly guy that's just speaking to too many people. That's the vibe that Hannah gave me. I don't mind, but say like, I like people that speak a lot with random people in the public. It's fine. Like I like random conversations, random people. I'm okay with it, but I can get why some people don't like that. So Hannah's not impressed. And while he's in the middle of like speaking with someone like, yeah, let's ride the duck. Hannah's calling over like, stop it, come back. And it's just like, it just makes the situation a bit more awkward. I guess the woman feels awkward. And she's like, oh, you know, your girl's getting a bit jealous type thing, which wild comment to make, I'll be honest, I wouldn't appreciate someone saying that about me. And, you know, Nick kind of like laughs it off. Again, he's just, he's a friendly guy. Some may say too friendly. I can see why she was annoyed at him not taking up for her a bit more in that moment. She is even more in her business than I would be, I will say. And she's like, you know, calling him a moron. And when he comes back, She's clearly annoyed and making it out like you're giving me the ick ride in the dark when really and truly she didn't appreciate he was interacting with another woman. But she didn't say that. But Nick calls her out and is like, I think you're just jealous. Um, which, you know, I, I guess let's bring the issues to the surface. Let's talk about it. What was a bit red flaggy to me on Nick's part is him saying you know, how are you going to be when we're around all the other couples? Like, will I be able to be myself? And there were some valid points in what he was saying, but how he was saying it was just, the message is fair, but how he delivers it, red flag, like it's almost like you're taking joy in knowing that she's jealous and you're trying to like egg her on like and bring it out of her. I was like, mm, yeah. So that was episode uh, five. So episode six, we see the couples, they're waking up together for the first time. What I enjoy about this is it's filmed on the phone, so it's, like, real and actually organic. Whereas normally on some reality shows, there's a whole camera crew set up in someone's bed and they're waking up like, oh, my God, like, you had to let them in your house, get them to come in. You've clearly got makeup on and now you're just so having to be waking up. Whereas, like, because it's recorded on their phone, it's just more real. It's, like, it was a cute insight and you've got them making their little jokes in the morning. Very cute. So then we have Ashley and Tyler and they're talking about, you know, like how things are going and stuff and meeting each other's friends and families. And he says a lot of people are going to have, basically a lot of people are going to have negative things to say about me. And I'm just like, hmm, why? <laughs> like I get, I get everyone has a past. At some point, you're a villain in someone's story and all of that. But he was making it out like he was preempting there's going to be a lot of madness coming. And I don't think she picked up on it fully because she's like, nobody can tell me nothing. Because they have had a good time together. He's been putting his best, best foot forward and they seem to be vibing. So she's like, I know you now and I love you for who you are now. But I'm like, yeah. So now I'm pulling back. I'm not trying to get too invested in Ashley and Tyler because I don't want to be heartbroken, guys. Um, but comment below your thoughts on that whole conversation. And yeah, so then we see Alex and Tim and she's somewhat like dissing his dress sense and stuff. And I'm just like, is this playful or is this awkward? Like, I can't, I'm just like, mm. and I thought Tim was someone to keep an eye on. But now I, I wasn't 100% sold on him. But now I'm like, is Alex actually the problem? Like, again, comment below and let me know your thoughts on that. Like, her just... I feel like she's always picking at him. And, you know, there's obviously, like, some people like to tease their significant other a bit and that's their way of flirting. Or can she actually just not stand him? 
<laughs> so yeah, so then we have the couples all meeting each other for the first time at the pool party. Um, people's reactions to Nick is hilarious because everybody knew he was like suave. So that I guess everybody was expecting to see like more of a bigger guy or something. And Monica's just like, yeah, he, he, he's cute. <laughs> Very shady. So yeah, Hannah is talking to Marissa about her and Nick and how Nick didn't want to talk about their sex life on camera and say like, you know, if they've had sex or not. Um, but then she goes on on camera to let Marissa know that they did have sex. And then she's just saying, you know, how great things are. And I feel like a lot of the cat a lot of the couples were guilty of doing this. They were overselling how good things are, like when it wasn't as good, like they were bigging it up more than what it is. And they weren't speaking about the problem as much. Or if they did, they overcompensate and say, yeah, but things are amazing and he's so great and he's so in love with me and all, he's so in love with me, da, 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 da. like he's so obsessed with me, cool. But then, yeah, so she brings up the duck situation with Nick and the other woman. And she says, now again, unless it's editing and they didn't show it to us, but she says, where is it? Saying that the woman called her a jealous bitch or something like that. And I was like, I remember her saying jealous, but I don't remember her like adding, I feel like she's adding on more. And I feel like that's just how she felt in the moment. And she's conflating the situation and adding in her feelings to it and hearing something completely different. Unless she did say it and they edit it out, who knows? But she keeps on saying, you know, she's not jealous, she's not jealous. People that profess things a bit too much, I'm like, maybe you are a bit. But comment below your thoughts. I really do want to know everybody's thoughts on the duck situation. So yeah, it's cute. The girls are all sad. They're all talking about how happy they are, as I said. And Ashley is basically like, you know, there's he can't really do any wrong. Things are amazing. And I'm like, this is foreshadowing, isn't it? He's going to do some wrong. Like, I am on ten hooks with them. I am so nervous with Ashley and Tyler. Oh. So Nick is talking to the guys and he was, he lets them know that Hannah had like a list of all her concerns or cons about Nick and she left it on the table and he found it. And I'm like, okay, maybe she was gonna, sometimes you want to write out your feelings, you want to journal, but, and maybe she forgot to pack it away. But part of me is like, I feel like she wanted him to see it because there's elements of her that can be a bit passive aggressive and so she had all these things listed out but she's telling everybody how great they are so yeah nick confronts her about the list and it doesn't feel like they do resolve things really and truly but yeah and then yeah so steven and monica are back home as well now at this point after the pool party and they're just like debriefing talking about everything and steven is very like passionate like just talking about everything that was going on and he's a talker him and i can't remember who it was Someone else, they connected on the fact that they overtalk. Was it uh, Stephen? Was it Stephen and Tyler? I don't remember. Or Tim? I can't remember. But yeah, so in this moment, he's overtalking. And Monica just like, listen, I love you. I really do. But, and he's like, I'm doing it again, aren't I? I'm talking too much. And I think that moment was quite cute. It was a nice way for her to bring up her grievances, but she obviously started it soft to let him know, listen, I do care about you, but this is too much. It was a funny moment. I enjoyed seeing that. And then we have Monica mentioning that Alex and Tim had a little weird moment. Did you see that? And I'm like, oh, I'm curious to know more about that. I'm, like, I'm sure they're gonna let us know what it was that happened. So yeah, there's that. So yeah, Nick and Hannah, they're back home talking about the list again. And she's like, I don't know, her reasoning was a bit like, oh no, it wasn't that big of a deal, da, da, da. And then he's listing out the things she was saying, like, these are big issues. And it was like, it feels like they're resolving it, but it's not really resolved. And he goes on to say, I'm not the only one who's delusional. Cause that was one of the points she had on the list, Delulu, or he's delusional. It was just, it, I, I feel like the age is coming into play here. I don't know if I see Tim Tim? I don't know if I see Nick and Hannah going the distance, I'll be honest. But comment your thoughts on the whole list scenario. I want to know you guys' thoughts on all of that. So then, cut to Tim and Alex the next morning. He's coming back, so we see he didn't spend the night. And we find out they got into an argument the night before because I guess Alex was in a bit of a mood and Tim is asking, like, what's going on? He wants to know, is everything okay? 
and she just wasn't in the mood to speak about it which I get sometimes you know if you're feeling a certain way you may not want to talk about it there and then and I guess Tim was pressing and she didn't like that which led to them getting into a big argument what we do find out is while they were in the argument she covered his mouth while he's talking and apparently she was shouting at him um it's that's crazy it's just like he made a point and let her know I don't like arguing I rarely argue so for them to get to that point like he had kind of listed out his boundaries and she was like yeah I don't really care and went for it we find out she even called him out of his name and that's uh like I feel like it's a whole other video I could do maybe it may come up in my uh Sunday feels um I had to learn a big lesson like I'm not a conf confrontational person but there was a moment where I found myself in confrontation and I learned the lesson of women like for me I like to receive love like how you treat me and how you are affectionate with me and speak to me and I learned men it's through respect like the minute you disrespect like there's disrespect it can truly hurt a man deep more deeply than I even imagined right um, like I said, story for another day. I'm excited to uh, speak about that. But in this moment, you could see how much it hurt him to be called out of his name because he he does nothing but speak with her, speak to her with the utmost respect. And she was clearly doing the complete opposite. And he's basically saying, you know, I need to see if I will be able to get past this. I don't know. And she's like, Tim, come here. I guess she wants to like hold him. And he's like, I'd rather not. So she goes over to him and is trying to hold him and trying to hug him and he's just not there yet and all she needed to do in that moment was apologize and she strikes me as someone that struggles this is alex struggles to apologize i don't know if anybody else saw it she did in the end like i'm say i'm sorry but it took so long and you could see this man was hurt like even behind his eyes it was just blank like he was over it and she's even asking him, you know do you think you're gonna stay sleeping in separate rooms like i want you back and he's like I'll be honest, I w he was coming there to end things, um, but he just needs some time. He behind his eyes, he just looks done. And yeah, they hug, but yeah, like I said, it seems like he's done. And that's pretty much where the episode ends. Guys, I don't know about you, but I'm excited for this season. I feel like there's going to be quite a few twists and turns. These men are insane, okay? <laughs> the men that they have bought, I'm like... I'm trying to think which of all of them is just like complete green flags and husband material. Like, I feel like it's going to be a lot of drama this season from the teaser we saw. I need to go back and watch it. But there's a lot. There's things that people hadn't um, expressed and let it be known and lied about. And it's just going to be messy. And I'm like, I don't know which couple is making it down the aisle. We will see. Uh, but it was a great first six episodes. This is a mega review, like six episodes. I think after this now, it's going to be three or four episodes each week. So it'll be more condensed and everything. But I'm excited, guys. We're back. Love is Blind reviews are back. I can't wait to get into it with you guys in the comments. Like I said, today's episode is dropping later on Thursday. But normally, I will be bringing them out to you on a Wednesday. Sunday, we have a new series, Sunday Feels. I'll be dropping that on Sunday, so look out for that if you're not already subscribed so you don't miss out on these reviews and all these other new series I'm going to be bringing to you. I'm excited to be back on YouTube. Yeah, and please, in the comments, I can't wait to like be speaking with you. You guys, like I said, I'm always open to you helping me see a new perspective with like all the couples and stuff, so I can't wait for all the conversations we're going to get into but yeah, that is all for now, guys. As always, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. All that good stuff I'm meant to ask you to do, please do. And I'm just rambling now, and I don't really know how to end this. So I'm just gonna cut.